In this video, I am going over my top 10 favorite hacks, techniques, and shortcuts that have helped me become faster and faster as a professional video editor. If we haven't met yet, I'm Colleen and I'm your video editor. In this channel, I teach you how to get a video editing job and how to get paid. Let's dive in. Now, the first hack I'm gonna share with you is small but so important, and it is to hack your workspace. Bear with me. Setting up your workspace so that you have all the windows that you need and everything that you don't need is so important. You can go into window workspaces and see what space works for you. Personally, I made my own workspace. It looks like this. It has no extra windows that I don't need. It has all the windows that I do need. I make sure my audio track mixer is there. My scopes are there. I make sure color is sitting right here and the project is sitting here. But this space works for me on a daily basis and I think it is so important to have your space. I know sometimes uh, Premiere has all these extra windows down here that are totally unnecessary for me and what I do at least. So number one, definitely hack your workspace. The number two hack that you definitely want to take care into prepping for yourself is hacking your keyboard. Now I'm gonna go into some shortcuts later down in the video. I just want you to be aware that you can make almost any action a shortcut. And so keeping that in the back of your head is so important. There are some things that Premiere already has shortcuts made up for. You can learn those here in the keyboard shortcuts. You can, you know, search for things and maybe, well, oh, this is the shortcut for this. It's a shortcut for linking and unlinking, you know, or you can set yourself up with your own custom keys if certain keyboard shortcuts aren't working for you. Over the course of my editing, especially now that most things are remote, most people are working from home, I think that making your own custom shortcuts is not as taboo as it used to be. It used to be more of, you might come into somebody else's computer that somebody else might be working on, and you want to be able to learn the shortcuts that Premiere already has so that you don't need to be inputting your custom shortcuts on every computer you work at. Now we're in a more remote world. I think it's safe to say that if you needed to customize your shortcuts, you can definitely do so. And if that's, especially if that's going to benefit you. Personally, for me, I've customized many shortcuts. The plus and minus with zooming in and out just doesn't work for me. It's too far across the board. I also used to work in Pro Tools a lot and the zoom in and out in Pro Tools was R and T. And so I have transferred that over to Premiere and it's just so much easier for me because I'm usually have my left hand on the left side of the keyboard toggling Q and W and um, A and, and undo and things like that. And so having R and T right there is just, it makes it so much easier for me. Another one is the text tool. For some reason, having it as the X for the keyboard shortcut for the text tool just works for me really well. It's right next to C and V, which I use very often. And if I'm doing something like captions, it just flows for me. And so I think that's something that you should keep in mind is that the keyboard shortcuts should flow through you. If you find that you're having difficulty with one or more of where they're placed, don't feel like you have to just like learn them where they are. You can customize them to whatever's gonna help you flow better in your edit. The next hack I wanna talk about is hacking with nests. It is so important for you to recognize why nests are important, how nests can help you, and just to have the knowledge of how to work around them and how to work with them. Nests are great if I needed to have all of these shots and they all needed to move uh, together. Maybe I wanted just a really long zoom in for some reason. And if I were to nest them all, I would be able to do that. Now I don't need to worry about having, um, you know, different motion effects for different clips. I can now affect the entire clip. This is super important for something like, hey, maybe my entire transition here, maybe I want to nest that so that it's easier to manage. And so I'm not selecting multiple things. I could nest this entire segment here. If you wanna learn more about nesting, please check out this video here where I do a deep dive into what are nests, why they are important, how you can use them to your advantage, and how to deal with things like audio uh, when you're working with nests. So definitely check that out. The next tip on my list is all about editing in the timeline. Now there are a couple different ways to edit and I have definitely seen editors go the route of finding their clip, pulling it into the source window, 
finding an endpoint, finding an outpoint, and then pulling it into the timeline. Usually I don't have a ton of clips that I'm dealing with. And so for me, it's easier for me to edit in the timeline. I am just going to pull all of the clips and then I'm gonna cut from there. And how I usually edit in the timeline is using a combination of the razor tool as well as the ripple editing tools. Q uh, trims the left side of the clip. Let's say that I wanna cut out this pause here. I'm gonna take, a, take my razor, clip right there, and then I go to the next clip and then I just hit Q. And it will slide the edit to the left right to that edit point. Just make sure that you have V1 on and then it makes cutting so much easier. And then same thing if I need to cut something on the W side, maybe I wanna cut on this end and I just want this end of my clip to get chopped off, I hit W and that takes it off for me. I'll do that again here so you can chop on that side and then you just wanna make sure that you are coming up here and then clicking W. It also is a lot faster because I'm editing with the waveform. I'm not looking in the source window for the next time that I, I speak. I'm looking here in the timeline and I can see in the audio, I don't need to play and listen to this whole pause here. I know that I start talking here, so great. I'm gonna chop here and then I can just go here and then great, we're done. You know, I essentially can edit via the waveform most of the time. Speaking of the V1 track, let's go into hacking your pace. It is so important for you to understand the track toggling when you're in Premiere. This button here toggles whether or not you're allowing video to even come into the timeline. So if I try and drag this clip in now, it's only gonna drag in the audio because I don't have V1 selected. Same thing with A1. If I have it like this, then it's only gonna drag in the video. This is really important to keep in mind, uh, especially if you are wanting to edit in the timeline and maybe you're pulling B-roll, but your B-roll has sound on it so let's just imagine that this is b-roll and i find my in point and out point and then um you can hit comma and that will insert it into the timeline but it will also insert the audio with it but if you don't have a1 selected it's only going to insert the video which can be super helpful tiny hack within a hack okay anyways keeping in mind that say you have both of these toggled on within those toggles you have all of these these toggles will directly impact what track you are pasting into when you paste. So I'm hitting Command C for copy for this one, and now I'm gonna hit paste. Great, I have V1 selected, so it's going to paste into here. It's always going to paste into the lowest track that is selected. If I do not select V1, if I don't have that one selected, it's going to paste here. If I have V3 selected, it's going to paste here. This is so important to understand because if you have a giant edit down here, where I have this already made edit and I wanna paste something over here, instead of needing to have, oh, I have this here and I, I wanna drag it over, but oh, it's, it's, I have to finagle it so that it's not gonna ruin anything when I drag it over. You don't need to do that. You can copy this, you can come over here and you can select, okay, great, V3. And then also make sure your A1 is not selected. So it will paste under and over your edit and it will, you know, it won't step on it at all. And you can move forward with your edit from there. Another hack I'd like to touch on is creating a favorites bin. I think I'm still in the 2020 version, so I should have my favorites bin. Yes, I do. <laughs> I just updated to 2021 Premiere Pro and all of my favorites have not been inputted yet into the favorites bin. It's kind of a mess. So I love it when I'm working in the 2020 version because I've had plenty of time to pull in my favorite effects. Um, this could be things like cross dissolves and um, filling and blurs and pushes. Anything that you use on a constant basis in terms of your effects, I would highly recommend pulling them into a favorites bin. You can make a bin by coming down here in the corner, create a custom bin, and it will uh, come up for you there. And you could call it whatever you want. I just call mine favorites. Um, and then whenever you'd like to pull an effect into it, say, let's pick one that I actually like. Um, let's pick Lumetri Color. We can drag that down here into favorites and now it will be in the favorites bin. This is super helpful because I hate searching through the effects bin and finding the right one or even searching is just, it just takes too long. And it's so much easier if I can just 
go into my favorite spin and pull my favorite effects onto my timeline. The next hack I have for you is all about hacking your speed. And this is a couple tips into one. The first one is the JKL shortcut. Obviously these are three separate shortcuts, but J is gonna move you backwards through the timeline, K is gonna hit pause for you, and L is gonna move you forward through the timeline. The difference is that the more you hit L or J, the faster you're gonna move through that timeline. This also works in the source window, so you can speed up your playing, you can pause, and you can go backwards at, um, at the same increasing speed. The next one that I use all the time is the A tool. If you select A, it will give you these two little arrows. When you select with that, it's gonna select everything to the right. This is so incredibly helpful and it helps me all the time when I need to move things around in the timeline. I just hit A, I scooch things over, I move something out, I hit delete. This is a great tool. Another tool that I don't use too often, but it does come in handy a lot is the rolling edit and that is N. So if you select N, it's gonna look like this funky little thing. And what this does is, is when you pull the edit, it's going to move the clips one way or the other. So if you just need to just scooch everything, just a frame one way or the other without adjusting the uh, overall time of the video, this is a great tool for that. Number eight is hacking your text. Now, I think that the type tool already has a shortcut set in, but for me, I made mine X versus, you know, it might've been T or something, I don't know. For me, it made it X because when I'm editing captions, I am usually, I'm using the razor tool. So that's C for me. I use that, I use V to get back on track and select the next clip. And then I like having X right there because then I can just hit that. It allows me to edit the next text. Use this at your own discretion. For me personally, this was a huge hack for me in editing captions much faster. Maybe you use X for something else and so this doesn't apply. But again, uh, hacking your text can be so helpful because for something so tedious like captions or whatever text you're editing, having a shortcut that's especially close to the other shortcuts that you use is super helpful. The next tip I'd like to share with you is all about presets. You can hack your speed significantly if you are using presets. These could range from anything. You could make a preset uh, of a motion that you like your text to come in a certain way. You can use a preset for color grading. You can have a color preset. You can have a drop shadow preset, uh, a, a white preset. You can have a lot of different things. I made four presets that are super helpful to me when I am editing graphics. And it is literally just the transform effect and I've just made it so I have a really nice clean slide in from all different angles, up, down, left, and right. And that helps me so significantly because that's a really basic movement that I have in a lot of my graphics. It saves so much time rather than manually making it myself. So if there's any way that you can put presets into your routine, whether that is graphic based or color based, whatever's gonna make your life easier, definitely if you can consider presetting it, it's worth the time putting in to make it a preset. If you wanna know how to make a preset, let me just show you really quickly what to do. For example, the one that I made was using the transform effect. So I'll just come here, I'll go into effects controls, and then I'll make the actual effect happen. So maybe I want it to kind of come here and we'll ease it in. I want it to start out here, and then I want it to have that blur effect. We'll say that's good enough. Once you're happy with that effect, you simply right click and hit save preset. You call it whatever you want. Maybe slide in right. I would anchor it to the endpoint, and then you hit okay. And then you could do that for all different directions. You could do that for anything you'd like really. Whatever is gonna help you move faster in your edit. The last hack I'm gonna share with you is an extra special hack 
because it has to do with Lumetri color and it helps you to color so much faster. You can color a couple of different ways. You can click on a clip, you can go to Lumetri color, you can make some adjustments and then you can copy that color from to each clip. I think that is atrocious and it takes way too long and we are in the business of saving time over here. There is another method that I uh, used to use and I use it sometimes depending on how my edit is going. And if I have too many clips that I'm working with, I will use an adjustment layer. And so you can just go to new item, adjustment layer, and you can drag that on as many clips as you'd like. It's gonna affect everything underneath of them. So you wanna make sure that any other effects or anything are above this adjustment layer. And then having your adjustment layer selected, you will go into Lumetri Color, you will make your adjustments as you'd like them, and that will affect everything underneath of it, which will affect all of your clips. However, there is a better way that you can even go. If you don't want the adjustment layer in your timeline, maybe you only have one or two clips, especially if you only have one clip that you're working with, but maybe you only have one or two clips and you want them all to look exactly the same. And you can see that I have already done this in this clip because it has the little red lines, not this big red one, but the little one under the effects that shows that the master clip has been altered. You alter the master clip by selecting your clip Okay, now right here, it says master. You're gonna select that and you see I have this Lumetri color feature on the entire clip. I have it on the whole entire clip. As long as you don't have too many adjustments that you need to make between different times in the clip, this is a really easy way to color all of your clips. Since you made it this far, please, if you don't mind hitting the like button below and hit subscribe for more tips on video editing, creativity, and freelance lifestyle. Check out these videos next on more tips on video editing in Premiere Pro. Thank you to my team. Again, I'm Colleen, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one.